Hey on, welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So I'd like to show you my build for Module 27 on my Paladin tank. There has been some updates with regards to powers and features, so we'll be switching things up a bit. Playstyle will also be a little bit different. But other than that, gear remains majoritively the same. Although you will want one or two pieces specific for the upcoming new trial. The defense of the Moon Dancer. Very AoE heavy, lots of groups of enemies coming in and then you needing to continually switch between having threat on different targets to be more specific in the end phase here where you're fighting this boss and then also adds and lieutenants on the side needing to tank switch. So this is the build I've been using in that new trial, play testing it, and it's the build I'll be basically mimicking for me on the live server, except I will be changing my race from what we have here as Azimar. This build is made to be practical, not look at anything fancy. We need to work on reliability, especially to be able to tank these massive hitting tank busters. Outside of that, everything else in the trial is pretty trivial. Just play mechanics and you wouldn't have any trouble. But the build will get us some pretty solid stats here, like defense and awareness at 90%, with crit avoidance 83%. Will decrease though, as you lose your divinity when casting stuff, and your deflect and deflect severity will be around 86% deflect to 75% deflect severity. You'll get the extra 5% deflect severity when you switch race from Azamar to the Renegade, which I recommend if you're trying to min-max. Again, not required, but I'm doing it. I'm switching to the Menza Brands in Renegade to be able to have that fairy fire. There'll be timestamps on the play bar below where you can skip to any section you're most interested in. This build is min-max orientated with endgame, but don't be scared of all the endgame gear I have. You can make use of many alternatives that are cheaper, easier to obtain, and we'll cover them in the gear section. But the most important thing is to use the right powers. And that's where we're going to go to now, our power setup. It has changed a little bit. Now in terms of Atwills, I still stick with O-Strike, mainly for the increased threat, and when you have multiple enemies, it's good area of effect. However, if you need some extra survivability and stamina regen, do not be afraid to just run Shielding Strike all the time. If you're still struggling at threat after these changes, then switch back to O-Strike, yes, or we'll talk about what you could use alternative for encounter powers. For me, I seem fine with O-Strike plus Radiant Slam, at least in this new trial. Going to the encounter powers, we're using Smite as our single target taunt and also threat power, absolution for the damage resistance, and binding oath for the stamina regen, and also the effect of it triggering our focused retaliation to get those stats pretty reliably. Now this is what you use in a boss fight. If you're just beating up groups of enemies, you can very well switch to Templar's Wrath here, and Burning Light, and you be fine. But again, single target, particularly in this new trial, we are using these three abilities. And for getting the enemy's attention, we are using Intimidating Presence. Talk a bit more about that when we go to feats. For the daily powers, Divine Judgment, mainly at the beginning of a boss fight to make sure we are retaining the threat of the enemy. If you're going with an artifact call in a coordinated group, make sure you're using this during the middle of the artifact call to make sure it's got all those damage buffs and you deal the most damage with that. And we combine this with a gear piece like this with the bonus Manticore's Bite. When we use a daily power, we deal 50% of our hit points in damage back to the attacker, giving us even more threat. Our other daily power is Divine Protector for survivability. And you particularly need this for the new trial in order to survive the tank busters. Okay, maybe it's not a must have, but it's highly advisable. This hit is just a ton. It'll give you reliable stats and a ton of damage resistance. Compared to other tanks, this is a huge advantage. 30% damage reduction and 30% awareness. This is where you get that awareness increase, nice and reliable. You're not relying on, let's say, fortified nature for that awareness, and you're not relying on, let's say, these arms for the awareness. So that's very nice, meaning you don't have to stack that awareness so high, but we can still get 90% with 
with Fortified and these arms when just beating up groups of enemies. We'll talk about more stats later on in that section. Class features, generally Aura of Wrath. Unfortunately, we can only have one Aura, so that's slotted there, but we do need to have Divine Challenger for running Smite for a Taunt. You can sometimes run with Valve Enmity for a Taunt. It's just, in this trial, not too great. And the power has been adjusted a little bit to be a little bit more friendly to cast, and it has a little bit of increased threat bonus. Very good if you don't need smite, but we can use smite at the beginning of a fight to get threat. We can use this a good few times during our intimidating presence and threat becomes no problem. But if you are struggling further with threat at the beginning, maybe use Templar's Wrath instead of smite at the beginning and then you could use composure that was the basis of how we played it before this update now we have the opportunity to switch over to smite with divine challenger having that as a taunt having a high threat because now it's affected by our increased threat which is like three times as effective as it was before just be aware, as you lose divinity, this will deal less damage, thus less threat. If you have another paladin who's running Ore of Wrath, then don't be afraid to use Ore of Protection for the survivability of everybody, or even Ore of Valor if you need some extra threat. This is huge. Like, if you really are struggling with threat, you could simply switch Ore of Wrath to Ore of Valor for just the first 30 seconds of a fight, of a boss fight and then switch back over to Aura of Wrath, and you should not have a problem holding threat after that. For the feat setup, I recommend just with this. Nice and reliable. Sacred weapon, we kind of don't use, but if you need extra threat, not the survivability of Absolution, you can use it there. I still want to do more testing with Divine Reciprocation and Heal Threat. I still need to work on that, and look forward to an updated video on that if it's somewhat viable. The other feat, I just go with Burning Vengeance. Again, just not much point with Bane in AoE even. You're just better off with Templar's Wrath and Burning Light, so we go with that one there. Divine Pursuits, generally better. Divinity Regen over time versus Justicar's Bulwark. Shield of the Gods for that survivability for those tank busters. But you can increase your team support a bit better with Sheltering Light and Pacific Content. Allows your healers to heal a bit more and also give them some protection with this. And then the final feat, Intimidating Presence versus Unyielding Champion. I'm switching to Intimidating Presence, just be aware that it does say you would lose the automatic block effect of Unyielding Champion. And this apparently is not the case. It's, I guess, bugged that you will still block half of the damage while just in Intimidating Presence. I'm okay with the bug, but as long as it remains, there's zero point taking Unyielding Champion. Just go with Intimidating Presence. And the huge benefit of this is that when you go to jump into a group of enemies you can activate it and you just deal damage around you and you pretty much are not going to lose the threat you're going to be hitting people immediately as soon as they spawn in and they'll immediately jump on you because of that hit additionally it has the increased threat effect increasing basically all the effective damage you deal by like 500 percent added to this which is 1,500. Additionally, they changed your Divine Palisade, so when you go into that, you will automatically have that 60% of your maximum hit points as your shield, rather than what it was before at only 50%. And you needed Unyielding Champion to be added to 60%, you no longer need that. So now we jump to our rotation. What you want to use in order to make sure you're holding that threat at the start of a fight. That is the most important part. Outside of that, you're just using your powers reactively. So you're using a spite when you need to switch or if you need some extra threat. You're using Binding Oath when you need the extra stamina. You're using Absolution when you're going to take a big hit. And of course, you're always using this block whenever you have stamina available and you're going to take some hits. You want to block as much damage as possible. Try and never have the stamina full unless you know you're going to take a big hit then you want to be making sure you have that binding oath ready to fill up that stamina and off you go you're good to take your big hit just be careful of the timing of that so with an artifact call right from the start you're going to want to make sure you have positioning combat advantage and then you're going to start with 
just a quick smite here, then go the artifact, mount, go into intimidating presence, then use another smite here, use your daily power, another smite here, and you should be good to go. Make sure to use like your dragon fire or hawk or something or other, and that should be it. You should be good to hold threat like that, otherwise just spamming your at will. Oath Strike or Shielding Strike if you feel you need the stamina regen of that. It has got pretty dead easy. At this point, like your Manticore Bite here is just going to be insane. Usually it will trigger. The boss should be attacking you. Some scenarios they might not and you might get a bit screwed over on threat there. But you should still be fine as long as you're timing those smites and having that intimidating presence up just for the artifact call. Outside of that, you're just going to save your divinity for when you need it. So save that for when you need to use your divine champion to block a big hit using the palisade as the block effect like this with the cone. You can also use that to protect allies behind you, giving them 10% damage resistance with this effect as well for when they're going to take a big hit. And because you have intimidating presence, you're also generating threat every time you're within that. So that's like really awesome. So now we move to our stats and the priority you want to have when building your character. You might be a newer player and not have everything I have right here. You don't have to have everything I have here in terms of gear either. Just work towards the right stats. I highly recommend focusing first on defense. Get that to about 80% and then you can kind of forget about it. I'm a bit overshot of the 80%, but that's fine. Awareness, you want to get that to like at least 60% and then you can use your Divine Protector to give you that extra 30% for those big hits. And you can use temporary buffs like these arms and fortified to get that up during like AOE fights and times where you're just attacking the boss and he's just attacking you back with smaller hits. Credit avoidance, yeah, you wanna get that to 90%, but it's not as important as the other two getting them to their base value. So we just work on that next. After that, you pretty much just wanna go hit points and that's really it. On the side, you can work on recharge speed, action point regeneration, movement speed, stamina regeneration it's all a mix and balance right there of which ones you're taking of those i would prioritize stamina regen if you don't need to move around much same with the recharge speed if you don't need your daily power back that often you usually shouldn't need to as tank busters are timed enough that you shouldn't need to stack this and other than that you can then go on to deflect and deflect severity when you get these stats to a comfortable level with these stats we can pretty much complete all content and when we have our daily power they go even higher with the deflect and deflect severity because of this ring here a lot of fights you won't need to use your daily power much unless they have Tank Buster specifically, which is not a lot of fights in all the other content. Mainly you have them in trials and like one or two dungeons. So now we go to our race and ability scores. And like I said, I highly recommend going the Renegade Drow instead of Asmar here for that fairy fire benefit. And you're also getting deflect severity with that. When you're choosing your ability scores here for that, you generally want to go Dexterity and Charisma. But if you want to be playing Paladin Healer, Dexterity and Wisdom. Otherwise, Azamar is just fine if you switch to that from what I was using in the past. Alternative races, Human is great for both your tanking and healing. Metallic Dragonborn is decent for both as well. Drow is great for the debuff there to help your team. That's with the Renegade has a very similar effect as well. And otherwise tank specifically, Dwarf is good. Halfling is okay. Perhaps you could take Tiefling for its Infernal Wrath. It's just not that reliable. As for your ability scores, you usually wanna just go full constitution and full charisma. So now let's jump to our gear. What you wanna be using here? Well, you can see what I'm using. And I recommend this setup for the new trial. The only thing new we have from module 27 here is this shirt. You'll be getting that via doing the trial. Alternative to that is the older shirt from our bundle and demon web pits. This one right here with the awareness stat. So the headpiece just comes from dragon hunts. Make sure you're doing those and get it. Alternatives would be like the turban, the manticore main helmet from Chult. You could use exalted maidens one if you didn't need the manticore bite. You could use chitters, just not very effective. For the armor, 
You want this from the demon web pits. Outside of that, there's just not great armor pieces. You could use the forest guardian one from doing Vault of Stars. You could use the rugged mail of the dragon hunter from your dragon hunts. It's okay as well. None of the new ones are any good. The arms. This one from the demon web pits is great. Again, the master version. All the mythic stuff comes from the master version. Alternatives to that is the crag scalers with basically the same bonus. Otherwise, you could have the new Starforged myths coming with the new trial. The master version where you could increase your divinity by 250. Or the superior crushers from dragon hunts. And then just use a different pants here like the debonair mycelian ones for our weapons we have the duergar ones not necessary i'm not getting them for my live server character either just i can stick with the feywood ones you do not need plus ones guys that's just overkill i just have a very nice person who gives them to me you can use the older mastered ones as well you could even use weaver weapons if this is an alt character. I recommend these because they'll support your team. Alternatively, do the advanced version of the new trial and get the legendary weapons. They're not bad for this new trial specifically. And then you could get the master version ones if you can get that high. They're good for yourself, but they're not going to support the team. Like these ones will giving them 2% extra damage and damage resistance. And also your healers get extra healing. For the boots, you want these rugged one from Dragon Hunts. Just do them and you get them. You do them on any level. Alternative is the blessed ones from Avernus Haunts, which will just be a lot harder to obtain, to be honest, these days, unless you have somebody gonna help you with that. For the neck and the waist piece with the artifact set, you kind of want, yeah, the mythic Tiamat set. It's very expensive though, and there is alternatives, and I would highly recommend the Cloak of Valhalla with that set to go with it. The Belt of Valhalla and the Horn of Valhalla. Alternatively, there's like the Tentacle Rod set here, and yeah, just go with the Valhalla set. It comes from the simple trial Assault on Svargborg, so it's generally not that expensive. And it has one of the best bonuses there for tanks, also to help your team. You're reducing the enemy's damage, which means anybody they attack not just you take less damage for the rings i highly recommend one with a charging bull bonus this was the newest one high stylum level comes from master crafting again you do not need it there's alternatives from dragon hunts the ring of celerity with charging bull from the auction house or from your war parties in avernus you have the ring of the condemned you can get plus four version or you could get the plus five version from the auction house and for our other ring we have the topaz ring from your master demon web pits with the deflect and deflect severity alternatives to all these rings is yeah you could be running illustrious grace to support the team but usually a healer will run that the ring of darkness again to support the team and yourself just not as reliable lothian spite for the incoming healing Ring of Overwhelmed from the Auction House again, or the War Parties in Avernus. When you're moving, you gain damage resistance. Very good. Or you could even run the Diamond Abyssal Loop ring there from Master Demon Web Pits for the Manticore Bite bonus and switch your headpiece to something else, like this one here with the regen for your divinity. But I highly recommend the Topaz ring, specifically when you're not using your daily power much. For the shirt and pants, recommend this new one. The bonus kind of sucks, it's whatever. We just use it for the stats and the item level. They're just aren't great options to be honest alternative is this one from the auction house shouldn't be that expensive and then this one from the auction house also shouldn't be that expensive you can look in your collections there's other alternatives to all these different names just different stats slightly but they'll give the same bonus which is the important part so that's it for our gear we move to our modifications so like like armor kits i recommend just crit avoidance in all of your armor pieces here that's generally what you'll need unless you have different enchantments and then for the neck and waist, just go with full awareness there. Could get stamina if you don't need the awareness, like actually we could switch to, to be honest. And then enchantments, you can see what we have here. Only really matters is in defense. We have two jades for us here, an amethyst and a cobalt. You could have alternatives like another jade here if you needed some crit avoidance or citrine for deflect or another amethyst for awareness just don't get garnets for defense they're no good because you'll have too much defense anyway 
put a garnet in utility overloads you'll generally want resiliency of the depths plus unholy protection but you can use overloads that are specific to the content they're just going to be expensive and annoying having to replace after every hour but there are ones from the guild that are good like from against dragons that last like two hours you can always take advantage of those i recommend a fortified nature specifically in like aoe fights where you're hitting a lot some bosses will hit you a lot as well but there is the option of flash freeze it can be a bit more helpful specifically again when you're going to take like a tank bus to here from this guy it's like if you have the flash freeze bonus up it's actually gonna do something versus fortified nature you probably won't have the bonus up at all but i just yeah, gonna go with Fortified. I've just used that for quite a while now and it works in most content where you need it. Flash Freeze just isn't reliable. You want to be able to survive without it anyway. And then I just go with Movement Speed here because I like Movement Speed. Alternative is Recharge Speed. For the artifacts, ideally as a primary we have Mithalar Fragment, but you will definitely want to have a debuff one that's going to help the team. Mithalar is one of those, but somebody else might use it and then you want like other ones, Dragon Ball Blades, Tentacle Rod, Wyvern Knives, Lantern. There is a big long list here and I still need to update this and add to it as there's a few more. But for the secondaries, you do want stamina regen ones like the Wheel of Elements, the Champion's Banner. And this is a whole list here with those stamina regen artifacts. And then you want, of course, the one for your set like the Tiamat's Arcane Globe or the Horn of Valhalla. So let's move to our companions. This is generally what I run with. The active companion changes depending on what content it is. You want one that's going to support the team, like Portobello, Tutor, Spine Devil. Usually you're just supporting them to deal damage. And that would be the top ones from this list here. For the companion gear, you want to be getting upgrades for Module 27, which I have not got just yet. They will be coming from the new campaign, Light of Xerxes. And just here, you want to get the star bound necklaces, crit avoidance and deflection to fit with this build. Higher item level, bit more stats, and it's just an upgrade, but not the end of the world if you just stick with, let's say, these ones, which I have from the Crown of Keldegon trial or from choice packs you get during your adventure, Scaleblight Summit, and so on. Just try and get those defensive stats as ordered by the priority of what you need. Now you can very well run without the mythic companion enchantment. It will basically increase all your stats by like 1.5%. But if you, all your ratings are going into red anyway, then there's not much point in worrying about it. Just use it for the extra hit points and you'll be fine. For the companion enhancement here, again, we want one that's going to support the team. You want ones like these. And there's also advantage nullification from the Portobello da Vinci, that is a very good option for survivability just here, reducing the enemy's awareness. In our offense slot, we got the Tamed Raptor, support the team, the Durgar here, but if you have, which very few of you probably do, you could run the Feral instead, which I usually do for when team survivability is important for mitigation checks. The Undying Overlord from the Lich, the Myconid here, and the Golden Deep Crow. Don't worry so much about getting exactly what I have. It will always be super expensive. There are a lot of alternatives you can use. Check this list. Just try and get ones that are going to give you the stats that, again, we prioritized. Try and do get the Lich, though. And from there, you're getting your defense, awareness, crit avoidance. I usually don't have defense such a high priority here because it's usually pretty easy to get. But from there, we move to our mounts. Here in the current tab, you again want a combat power that's gonna support the team's damage. This is again a list of all the useful ones. In a dungeon between the tank and the healer, you wanna be using Eclipse and Swarm. For the equip bonus here, you want again something that's gonna support your team ideally, like pack tactics, Mystic Aura or Runic Aura. In the stable, this is what I generally run with. With Module 27, we can get Tactician's Precision, reducing the cooldown of our encounter powers when we use a daily power. Pretty massive. Helps a lot with cutting the cooldown on Absolution and Binding Oath, so you can use them a bit more. We use two Protector's Covenants for the stats, cause why not? And an Accursed Resolve just for some more deflect there you get affected by a lot of debuffs as the tank. So you have this a lot of the time. For the insignias, you can see we have just courage and fortitude throughout. 
Anything that's like this gold or brown is fortitude and anything that's like bluish is courage. The colors that matter is just stamina regen here. I like to have movement speed here, but you could have incoming healing. And then you want to have like recharge speed, but there's no problem if you just have like crit severity here from DPS builds and healer builds. For your boons here, you do want to be getting like all the defensive ones. So get this hit points, crit avoidance, defense, get the movement speed as you go up, get the deflect severity, more hit points, more awareness, deflect, more hit points, and then go with like recharge speed, stamina regen, incoming healing, blessed resilience, focus retaliation, and you can get like enhanced application if you have some more. When you use your at wills, you can have a chance to reduce the next attack on you by basically 30% when you have this on three stacks, but uh, you can't really rely on it. So it'll help when it helps, but yeah, most of the time you won't even notice it. We can get our lingering medicine here. We can get damage and damage resistance against fiends for like the demon web pit dungeon. And then we could get some like action points, but we don't have enough boons left. So we'll just throw them in against cultists there. So lastly, our consumables and buffs. I recommend Caprice for this build, chocolate or food that's going to give you awareness, potions of deflect. You can get multiple different ranks. Don't spend too much on them. And Fohammer's favor elixir. Alternatively, instead of full hammers, you could go with Elixir of Steadfast Devotion if you need that extra awareness early on. For our belt items, Stone of Health, pretty important, but you can get away with Health Pots if you have a really good healer, Dragonfire for the threat, and then like the Chain of Scales. And that's it. That's pretty much it for the build. You can get away with quite a lot. Once you know what you're doing and know the mechanics of content, it gets very easy to tank. But starting out can be a bit of a learning curve. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask me. And a special thank you to all these channel members for their added support. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.